This is a keeper. This was given by the father himself to a holy nun in Italy. Her name was Sister Eugenia. This prayer, the apparition, has the imprimatur of Holy Mother Church. I mean, it's been totally approved. It's a prayer to God the Father. And you need to know this prayer. I think you should memorize it. And I say this first thing in the morning when I get out of bed. First thing, that's what the Father recommended. Father God appeared to Mother Eugenia. I must admit to you, beloved, I've never heard of this before. Now, I'm a man who has seen many visions. I'm, I'm blessed beyond my value. It's unbelievable. But I've never seen this. God the Father appeared physically to Mother Eugenia. I have never heard of this before. He literally walked into the convent with a whole trail of angels. And she knew he was coming because he told her by the Holy Spirit. You see, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit all work together. They never fight one another. They always work together. That's why the church has to always be one. Amen. We can't be fighting one another. We have to work together in unity. So the father appeared to Mother Eugenia and he had a crown on his head. And this is the most beautiful thing. The father, this is a true story, approved by the church, by the way. He sat down on a chair across from Mother Eugenia in the parlor of the convent. Now, I wish I had been a fly on the wall for that conversation, but she wrote it down. He sat down and guess what? Guess what? Guess what kind of shoes the father was wearing? He was barefoot. <laughs> God the Father was barefoot. Like me when I was a little boy in Florida. I ran around in bare feet all the time. God the Father was barefoot. That leaves one big question for London. Is God the Father prideful or is God the Father humble? Let London never be arrogant or prideful. Amen. Let no one in London be arrogant or prideful. If you have $500 shoes, give them to me today. I will sell them and give it to the poor. Amen. I'll give you my sample. Is that all right? And by the way, guess how much these sandals cost me? Nothing. My friend gave it to me. I'll give them to you. If you're wearing $5,000 shoes, give them to me today. And start walking around barefoot for a week. Amen. Is God the Father prideful? Is God the Father humble? He's humble. We have a humble God. He was wearing a crown on his head. And the Father, true story, he sat down with Mother. He took the crown off of his head and put it on the floor next to his bare feet. He took the crown off and put it on the floor next to his bare feet. And he says, Mother, from now on, I do not want my people afraid of me. I do not want my people afraid of me. I don't want them trembling at a mighty king. I want them to love a humble father. Amen. That's kind of like God the Father right there. God the Father is very humble and childlike. And so he dictated this prayer to Mother Eugenia. He said, may all my sons and daughters, even Protestants, even Protestants, could say this prayer as soon as they get up in the morning. And so when I get up in the morning, I did this morning where I was staying. First thing, I said the prayer. Before I took my head off the pillow, I said it three times. I want to obey my Father and I love Him. And the purpose of all of creation is to give glory to the Father. The reason Jesus died on the cross was to bring you to the Father. The reason the Holy Spirit fills you is to make you like the Father. Amen. So this prayer, we're going to learn it right now. This will establish within you, beloved, a new relationship with the Father. 
I have experienced it in my own life, even as a priest. There's something new that happens when you say this prayer. The most important thing this weekend the Lord has shown me about those who've been here and about London is to free us from the spirit of orphanhood. No one here is an orphan. If I could be so bold as to say that is a lie from hell. It is a lie from hell. You are not orphans. Amen? I love you. I'm a priest of love. And I love you. Can you feel that? I love you. I say that not as Jim, but as Father Jim, and as a priest, a representative of Jesus Christ. And if I love you, how much does he love you? Do you give me a break? If I love you as imperfect as I am, how much does the Lord love you? And how much does the Father love you? Amen? Now, beloved, listen to this as a lesson from an exorcist. Listen to this. If you hear a voice this week calumniating you, like saying mean things to you in your mind or your heart, like you're no good, or you're ugly, or you're bad, if you hear these mean and cruel voices saying mean things to you, like no one loves you, or there's no hope for you, Beloved, get a grip and realize that's from Lucifer. Amen? That's from the devil. God is a God of love. Amen? He's a God of love. I'm trying to give you an instruction on the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And just remember this now, as simple as possible. God's voice is a voice of unending love. Even when I do something wrong, he doesn't condemn me. Satan condemns. God saves. Amen. It's a tiny prayer. You can memorize it easily. I'm going to say it now. Just listen. You don't need to say anything. Just listen. As you're passing out the prayers. My beloved Father, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Be Thou my Father. Be always my eternal Father. Do not leave my soul. Do not abandon me. Do not leave me out of your sight, my Father, for I am your child, whom you have created to please you, to adore you, to honor you, living my days as you have given me the license to live it. I offer to you my fiat, through Mary, to Jesus, to you, Eternal Father.